Hey everyone, Joellen here and welcome to Washington Watercolor. For today's demonstration, I thought it would be fun to paint this lighthouse. It's hard to say why I'm attracted to lighthouses. They seem to be the gatekeeper between the sky, the land, and the water. All subjects which I love to paint. In this photograph, we can see the light coming in on the left-hand side, creating a nice cast shadow and a form shadow on the lighthouse. In the distance, we can barely see maybe the suggestion of some water, and I really love the texture in the foreground. Here is a list of materials I'll be using for this demonstration. I'll start off by taping the perimeter of my painting with drafting tape. This way, I'll have a nice clean edge when I'm finished. I'll start my drawing by finding the horizon line and I'll lightly sketch it in. I'll then find the center line of the lighthouse. Creating a cylindrical shape can be challenging, so the center line will help me keep the whole thing symmetrical. I need to pay careful attention to the curves at the top of the lighthouse, making sure they are curving in the correct direction to bring them above eye level. There, I think this is good enough. I'll next use my drafting tape to block off the straight edges of the lighthouse. This will free up my hand so I'll be able to put the sky in easily. I'll wet my paints and palette and clean up any old paint from the last demonstration. I'll then prepare the sky color. For the color I'm going to use Windsor Blue green shade. I feel like this is pretty close to a true blue sky color. And if you don't have that, cerulean blue is just fine. I want to make sure I mix up quite a bit so I won't run out of paint. I'll begin by wetting my paper with some clean water, or at least pretend clean water since it's stained a little blue. This way, wetting it with clean water, it will give, it will allow me to get a really nice gradated wash and kind of smooth run through the sky.
I'll begin by placing my color at the top of the page and I'll work my way down and I'll make the paint a little bit lighter and a little bit more watery as I work my way down. This way I'm creating some atmosphere and some perspective. At the very top of the page, I'll add a little bit of ultramarine blue to my mixture. And you can see how useful the tape is as I work my way right through it. And I'm thinking about diagonal strokes, and this will add a little bit of excitement to the sky. Right at the horizon, I'll add a touch of Windsor Violet. I don't know if you've ever you know, gone to the ocean and observed what happens at the horizon line, but I feel it just picks up a little bit of purple as it disappears. Using my damp brush, I'll lift out a little bit of color up in the sky to create the suggestion of some soft clouds. And this will give it a little bit of contrast right by the top of the lighthouse. So the sky will be a little lighter where the lighthouse is a bit darker. When I'm happy with my sky, I'll give it a little dry. I'll then lift off the tape. Using some winds of violet, I'll suggest the distant ocean. I'll soften the top line just because I want that to push back in the distance. Using some winds of orange, I'll paint in the sand. I'll then erase the center line of the lighthouse. I'll clean up my palette on the light side. I'll add just a little touch of lemon yellow with a lot of water. And last minute, I decided to add just a touch of masking fluid to the right hand side and the bottom sill of the window. Once it's dry, I'll add a very light, light wash of lemon yellow to the left-hand side of the lighthouse. I'll follow up with a little bit of Windsor Violet to the right-hand side. And then I'll add a little bit of winds of orange to the middle part or the mid-tones of the lighthouse. My goal is to create a nice round shape. While wet, I'll add a little bit of Windsor Blue to this mixture. I'll add a touch of darker paint to get this with more value contrast to give it a nice round form. I think a little bit of neutral tint snuck into this mixture.
the darker values moved over a little too much, so I'll use a damp brush just to move or wipe out some of the paint. I'll use that same mixture to paint the shaded side of the building. I'll add a touch of Windsor Orange to the wet paint just to give this a little bit of life. Using my flat brush, I'll paint in the roof. up a really dark value with neutral tint and a little bit of burnt sienna and I'll use my rigor brush to paint the top sections in darker places of the lighthouse. The dark touches just make a huge difference. Well, how did this happen? Camera or operator issues? I'm not sure. It looks great, but you missed the whole thing, so let me try to recreate it for you. I painted in some yellow okra, and if you don't have that, raw sienna is just fine. I put a little bit of sap green in, and I added a little bit of burnt sienna with that purple mixture just to get those leaves and a little bit of vegetation up at the top. I'll next give it a good dry. Once dry, I'll put on a little bit of masking fluid to hold the place where I want flowers to be. While the masking fluid is drying, I'll use that purple mixture to add the cast shadows onto the lighthouse. Once my masking fluid is completely dry, I'll add some touches of burnt sienna along with some green perlane to create some depth and darks in the foreground area.
I'll give my painting a good dry and then pull off the masking fluid. I think I'm done. Let's give it a sign and then pull off the tape. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and you give it a try at home. If you like this content and would like to see more, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.